I'm here. So, hi everyone. Um, I'm here to talk about uh, ray tracing in one second. <laughs> um, so, uh, ray tracing. Uh, what is ray tracing by itself? It's just uh, a technique in order to generate uh, 3D images. It's uh, it's called ray tracing because the the idea is that we have a scene that is described by objects. We have our image, which is a 2D plan, and we have the camera. The camera is going to cast a ray to, uh, toward our image and is going to cross all our images, uh, all our objects, which are then going to be uh, reflected with the light, the brightness, and everything. And uh, this is why it is ray casting. Then we. Um, no. <laughs> um, the, uh, the principle of this is mathematical, meaning that uh, we don't have any uh, vectorization, we don't have any optimization like this, and uh, we are going to process pixel per pixel, and uh, it's, uh, it's a uh, very, uh, very good way to process uh, images and to parallelize and to make things even faster, because one pixel is not going to impact the, uh, the, the pixel next to it, and uh, we can distribute them if we want to process an image with one pixel per, uh, per server, we can. It would not be very efficient, but we could. <laughs> so, um, this is a small illustration of, uh, of what I just explained. So we have the camera that is going to cast a ray through our image and is going to intersect with our scene. The scene is an uh, object that can be a sphere, um, a cone, anything, and then it can be assembly, uh, an assembly of multiple things. This is a small example from, um, oh, sorry, I forget something. Uh, at first, um, the ray tracing uh, was a, a project from uh, my first year in school, uh, in IT school, and uh, this, is, uh, this is a result of things that you, you could do with uh, less than one year of experience of programming uh, in C, and uh, with that, uh, that method. So here I have a couple of examples of more complex structures, so for instance a dragon, and uh, it's just a composition of different objects, and everything is just spheres, uh, cones, uh, clan, and uh, everything, and it can do a pretty realistic uh, effect, and you have, uh, for instance here, uh, spheres that have transparency, that have reflection, that have light, and uh, you, can, uh, you can have infinite uh, possibilities with this. And uh, so, in order to do that in Go, what do we need? You will guess we don't need anything. The standard, the standard library has everything we need, and it's uh, everything in the package slash uh, EMG. And uh, there is a very good uh, blog post uh, on the official Go Golang blog that uh, talks about uh, how to play with images in Go. And uh, in order to, uh, to, uh, to render image like this, once again, we don't need anything else. No OpenGL, no, 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 no crazy uh, libraries, just the standard library. Uh, because uh, because we have a multiple way of the image, uh, just for the ease of it, I'm going to use the image.rgba, which is just a slice of int, uh, of a uint8, which is a byte, meaning that uh, for each pixel, is going to be represented by one byte, and the uh, one byte is one color. So for each pixel of our image, it's one byte, one color, and we are going to process that. So, as I said, it's a uh, every of the scene is represented by objects. Each object is represented by any question. It's mathematical. Uh, the, uh, uh, this is back to high school. Uh, what is the equation of a, of a, um, of a straight, of a, um, of a cube, of a sphere, of a plan, of everything? It's uh, just equation. So we are going to, uh, to try to, uh, to represent that in Go. And uh, the idea is uh, to calculate the um, distance, the shortest distance uh, between the camera and the object, and to find the color of the closest object. So, in order to uh, to describe our thing, it, uh, because it is not uh, it's not a binary, it's not a JPEG, it's not anything. It's really processed at a, at runtime. We need to describe our thing. For uh, we're going to say like uh, I want an image on 800 800 per 600. It's uh, it's uh, it's our image itself. We need uh, I call it I, but it's really the camera. It's like uh, what is the point of view where we are going to see our scene, and after is a list of all the objects that are composing our scene. So this is a very small example. But uh, it can be uh, composed and uh, getting pretty big in order to make uh, very, uh, like very big uh, images and uh, with a lot of effects and a lot of uh, realism. What is an object? When we think about it, 
Uh, and uh, all our objects it can be a sphere, it can be uh, any, uh, a cone, it can be anything. It's going to be uh, a simple intersection between the object itself and the uh, the, the ray that is uh, casted from the camera. So we need to know where is the camera itself, and we need to know that vector, which is going to change from each pixel to each pixel. So here is a small, my small interface. Uh, so we have the intersect, which is going to be the most important, and we're going to talk more about this. And we have color. Color is just going uh, because uh, it's an interface, and we cannot access direct numbers from a, from a struct by an interface. It's a small method that will work on the color of the object. And after we have parse, because we want to be a bit more generic, and uh, I'm going to talk a bit later with this. So, in order to process that, and uh, remember that uh, those, uh, those images like I showed you earlier, everything can be uh, resumed into this uh, small function. What do we have? We have k, which is going to be the distance between uh, to, uh, to the objects. We are going to have the color, which is the default color. So if there is no uh, intersection, uh, the color is going to stay black. And uh, of course. And uh, after we have v. V is our vector. So if you will notice the prototype, we have uh, x and y, which is our pixel on the image. So we are going to process for each single pixel. We are going to do all this. And uh, we are going to have uh, this vector v, uh, depending on those uh, x and y. Then once we have our vector, we need to calculate for each single object. Because it can be a lot of objects. It can be transparency. It can be reflection. We for each pixel, we need to, uh, to solve the equation of all the objects of the scene. So if in a scene we have like 1,000 objects, for each uh, pixel, we will need to, uh, to do the calculation for everything. So it's very easy because we have the, that interface. No matter what is the object that implements that uh, uh, intersect method, we can just loop over our list of objects and check what is the closest one and just fetch the color from it and return the color. So here is uh, an example from a, a plan. So there is uh, is very trivial. We have uh, the parse method, uh, which is just going to uh, initialize and return the, 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 the object itself, the color that was written, the color of myself. And then we have the intersecting method, which is the one with the testing. Uh, the I sub and differ AI add, it's a small trick because our I can be anywhere, but we don't know the, uh, the equation to, uh, for instance, for a sphere or for a cone, we don't know the equation from, uh, like, if my i is in, uh, like, uh, other than 0, 0, 0. By, uh, by the just subtracting the position of the camera with the superposition of, uh, of the object directly, we put ourselves in 0, 0, 0, and so we can process and uh, resolve a basic operation very easily. And uh, in the case of a plan, it's just uh, the position of the camera divided by uh, the, um, uh, the axis z from the vector. Very trivial, and it allows you to do um, a plan. A sphere is a bit more complex, uh, but it's uh, still the same idea. We are going to have uh, ABC, and there is going to be uh, A squared plus BX plus C equals zero, and we are resolving the, uh, this. The cone is the same thing as a sphere, but a bit more complex. We had uh, um, uh, uh, one more component. And uh, after, so we need to compute the image. Uh, like we, uh, we saw just before, how to compute one pixel, and then we are going to, uh, to compute the wall, uh, the wall image. The wall image. Uh, it's uh, very trivial. We go from zero to the to the max, and for each line, uh, for, I mean for each column, we, cal we calculate each line. We uh, I could have done that in a in a single dimension uh, loop, but I think it's clear like this. And so uh, we do um, EMG set on x y of the calculation. So the, as we saw, the calculation is going to return a color, the color of the closest object, and we just take that color and inject it into the our image, which is going to set the one byte. Uh, from this position. Then, uh, one of the issues of this, it's like it's pretty straightforward and it's very difficult to uh, to do like a lot of operation and have uh, big scenes because it's uh, single threaded and uh, we cannot do a lot. But because of Go, it is as easy as this to uh, to make it like eight, uh, eight times faster. Well, what does this do? We, uh, it's just a uh, semaphore uh, pattern. We, uh, just for the sake of it, I just uh, use the, the amount of CPU I have, and uh, I'm creating that uh, uh, structure that I'm going to fill up 
Uh, I use truck because it's a zero uh, size value and uh, it's uh, just practical. And uh, I'm going to uh, to overload my uh, my channel. And for uh, for each uh, operation, I take something out of the channel and I start my routine. And then after the num CPU uh, run, I'm going to have num CPU go routines and I'm going to block because I'm trying to read from a channel that does not exist. And in the on their uh, on their own each routine is going to uh, to populate back that uh, channel once it's done. So once it's done, the loop is going to keep going and this allows us to parallelize very, very easily. We, uh, we could uh, optimize this, we could uh, find a different way, but the, uh, one of the good advantages of the big advantages of Go is that it uh, allows us to do this kind of thing. Uh, then, once we did our image, so like right now we populated uh, a, a slice of byte with the colors. It is uh, completely in memory. We, uh, it would be nice to render it. So, yet again, on the standard library, you have everything you need. You can render a JPEG, a GIF, or a PNG directly with the standard package. But there is a one third-part package which is um, which is very interesting. It's just a, a binding to uh, X11, and it is. Uh, um, I will provide the link. It is in a pure Go, meaning that uh, if you want to uh, to compile with a uh, Sigrid uh, number equal zero, you can. It's static, and uh, it allows you to uh, to play directly with your um, uh, window manager. Then we have the par the parsing. So we need to parse the the file uh, that I showed you at the beginning. And uh, what if we wanted, for instance, uh, multiple format. Um, as I said, at first it was a project uh, was that I had in school, and so in school we had a little bit of freedom and a lot of people did a lot of different formats. And uh, it would be interesting to support different formats uh, in, the, in order to, uh, to render an image, because JSON is nice, but we might want uh, XML, YAML, or anything. And um, Go will allow us to do that very easily. Um, I will show you that in one second. Uh, the future of Go, uh, we talk about it just uh, like uh, at the Q&A. Uh, in the future, 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 very maybe uh, sometime, uh, we will have uh, dynamic libraries and it will allow us to, uh, to have actual plugins, which allow us to have uh, arbitrary uh, uh, object and parser and everything. And uh, that's it. Now I want to show you like what it's uh, what it looks like in uh, in the go side, because I noticed that uh, we didn't have enough um, enough of this uh, yet. And let's go go right. I mean, I just want to show you what is uh, how it looks like on the code side. So here we have our uh, we have the main. We want to. F oh yeah, sure. Yeah, we have, uh, we have our main, and uh, we are we're going to uh, to pass our CLI flags. If we if we go check where, where this is, it just pass uh, a couple of um, of parameters, which is our renderer, which is going to be either X11 or JPEG or whatever the parser. If uh, we want to have a YAML or or, um, or JSON, then the so small usage we uh, this is pretty standard. Like it should not uh, shock anyone. Then we are going to uh, to parse. Or, uh, yeah, I know it seems a bit too weird, but with, uh, with the CLI flag, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we parsed everything. And if you, uh, if you notice here, we have a parser all, and uh, this is a small trick that uh, you must know if you use the C uh, database SQL. Uh, if uh, I want to go to my parser, I will see that uh, my old parser is just a loading from the JSON and YAML. And uh, if I, uh, for instance, to the JSON, is going to register itself to this, so that way, like uh, we can uh, we can have multiple uh, different parsers. And uh, a small trick is that I can also de declare my extension, so you don't even need to specify which parser. And by the extension file name, you can find everything you need. And uh, we are going to apply the exact same concept for the um, for the renderer. Uh, I have X11 and JPEG in here, and uh, with all, we load everything. And uh, where it gets fun is for the objects because for the objects, it's the exact same thing again. We, uh, we are going to load our objects uh, on the same way as the database, and uh, it allows us to um, us or the community or anyone that uh, to contribute and to create a completely separate package that can be just included either on this file if you want to compile, but uh, that's, uh, that way it's completely isolated. Everybody does what they want on their side, and it does not impact the, the, the core. If uh, 
I'd like to go back to the main and show you the compute. No. <laughs> here. So here is, uh, is really exactly what I showed you earlier. It's going to, uh, to show everything. And uh, that intersection method, it's uh, because it's an interface, we don't really know what it does. But we, can, uh, we have a tool uh, that is awesome, which is called Go Oracle. And that is going to show you, uh, to show us that this could be that, that, or that. And uh, because uh, yeah, very often you're playing with interfaces, but very often you do everything, and uh, having this kind of tooling is uh, very, very useful. So that's, uh, that's about it. So uh, if you have any questions. <laughs>